People are celebrating this morning. They've been celebrating for quite some time now because they've been getting water. This morning we're going to shed some spotlight on what's going on in the water situation in Trinidad and Tobago with the Honorable Marvin Gonzalez, the Minister of Public Utilities. Natalie? Thank you very much, Rockers. And let me tell you something, especially now, after be going through the pandemic for almost two years, good news is always welcomed. And I think sometimes, you know, we just underestimate how potent and powerful these things can be. And that thing is just that nice little stream of water that's flowing through your pipes. So let's say Happy New Year to the Minister and welcome to the No Morning Show, Minister Gonzalez. Hi, good morning, uh, Natalie. Happy New Year to you and your other hosts. Uh, Happy New Year, Trinidad and Tobago and all your listeners. Uh, thank and you viewers. so much. Thank you so much for joining us. Listen, when you said the other host, you better get his name right. Him, look up, you know. His name is Rokos. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Rokos. Good morning, Rokos. Morning, morning. So, how Minister, are you doing? I good, I good. Much better now. <laughs> <laughs> Minister, so Rokos, thank you, I thank you so much for joining us. I I have been really paying attention to the community water improvement program and just decided that I wanted to take some time to speak with you about it because I think it's such an excellent initiative. Because one of the things I've said over the years, I kept saying, I can't believe that in the year of our Lord, I think I started saying it from 2015, in the year of our Lord 2015, I made it all the way to 2020 to say that, you know, in the year of our Lord 2020, we don't have pipe-borne water, water in a lot of communities. So let's just talk about, as the Minister of Public Utilities, what made you decide to embark on this community water in, in, uh, improvement program? So, um, Natalie, first to begin, um, let me say that I was born and raised in a rural community where um, I experienced firsthand and personally what it means not to have, you know, tap water, water running to your home. I experienced what it means going to a river to wash clothes and to fetch water and to take back to your home, um, et cetera, and depending on a community spring to get water. So, um, you know, this job as Minister of Public Utilities, I understand the pain and I understand the troubles of communities that do not have water and the experience of people not having access to water. But when I came into the Ministry of Public Utilities, I um, visited a number of communities and listened to some of the villagers, listened to some of the technical people in the Water and Sewage Authority, some communities that haven't had water for 20 years or 30 years. In some cases, cases like Guayco Tamina, there are some residents who, um, who claim that they didn't have water in 50 years. We visited Wharf Trees a couple of weeks ago and they have been struggling to have um, an efficient supply of water for over 20 years. But when you do the assessment, you recognize immediately that to get water to these communities, it will not take hundreds of millions of dollars. All it, re it, it, it requires is the construction of a booster to get the water to the elevated heights, the construction or the refurbishment of a tank in, in the community to get the water into the specific community, the running of a, um, a pipeline and to connect that community to the water grid, the refurbishment of a booster that went into a state of disrepair for years and there's no attempt to refurbish it or the, um, the complete collapse of a water, a water treatment plant that, um, that went out of operation for years and, and, and was never refurbished. And to get those plants and to get those booster stations and to run those lines will not take any huge capital expenditure. And I have decided that in the first phase, we, we identified 22 communities and based on an allocation received from the Ministry of Finance um, in, mid, in the midterm review last year, um, we identified 22 communities in which that we 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 um we sought to undertake a number of some of these short term interventions, and um, the the outcome of it was quite phenomenal because, for example, the first booster that we refurbished completely was the Pitch Road booster in Mova, and um, the refurbishment of that booster resulted in um, the improved water supply for seventeen thousand people in the Mova area, and there are people who live in Mari Road in in Mova who never had. Um, and dreamt of, of, of having a supply of water and they received water for the very first time and the refurbishment of that booster caused water to reach to the, to the highest top um, or levels rather in, in Mari Road and Booster. Then the next booster we, we, we refurbished was in, um, or rather we constructed a new booster that was constructed in Lua Mendes Drive in Chamflet, which uh, resulted in an improved and increased water supply for 15,000 people 
in the Champla area, especially those who live on the elevated points. Then we move to um, La Fortune in point 14, where a plant that went out of operation since 2013 that had the capacity to produce over 5,000 or 500,000 to 600,000 gallons of water with a massive um, dam in that area. It's Dam Road in point 14. And that plant went up out, um, out of operation for since 2013. And the people in Egypt Village, etc., Indian Village, they all suffered for water. We got that plant um, back into operation under the seaway program and the people in that area now experiencing an improved water supply. The same thing we did in North Manzanilla, Guayco Tamina, Wharf Trace in St. Joseph. And um, so far, um, we have executed about 17 or 18 successful projects within a five month period, resulting in an improved water supply to 70,000 people. But those 70,000 people, many of which never experienced pipe-borne water supply um, in their lives. And that's just incredible to believe that you still have people, you know, who are living in this day and age who never had pipe-borne water or who even never had a constant supply more than one day a week. And so, and that's why I wanted to put a spotlight on this initiative because I think it's just it's so really incredible where we were yeah. and what we're doing now to try to solve the problem. One of my cameramen here was telling me that, you know, for the first time he's getting water four days a week and it's more than oh. he's ever gotten before. And he was literally dancing when, when we decided that, okay, you're coming on the show to talk about this because he's one of those people who benefited, uh, benefited. from the water community water improvement program. But Minister, you talk about doing 17 to 18 successful projects thus far. Is it 17 to 18 uh, as in the 22 communities that were identified or are these 17 to 18 in less communities? How does it work? So 17 or 18 out of the 22 communities that were um, identified for intervention. Um, so we, um, we just have you know, a couple more communities to, um, to rule out and um, we intended to, to, to um, complete the first phase um, by the middle of this month but unfortunately um i had to go on isolation uh, was forced to go into isolation because i was tested positive for covid last week friday and because of that um i had to we, we had to put a hole on the commissioning of the remaining projects for um that we've identified in, in the first phase so um so as soon as i'm out of I, um, quarantine i get the green light to go back out um, i will be ruling out the rest of the projects to complete the first phase. And we have already identified 15 projects to execute in, in, in the second phase. And um, the second phase will commence in, in two weeks time. You know, Minister, I really want to wish you a speedy recovery. I know that the fact that you're here speaking with us on the program means that you're doing well enough, but even so, I mean, coronavirus, we've seen the effects of it. And so I just really want to wish you a speedy recovery. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, it, uh, you know, this, the symptoms I've experienced thus far, it's very mild. Um, you know, being a country boy, I'm, I'm taking my ginger tea and fever grass and you, you know how it goes and taking my steam and peppermint oil and, and stuff like that. So I have to be thankful to God that the, um, the symptoms are very mild, just getting fever chills in the evening time. And, but in terms, and of course, no taste, no smell, nothing at all. But I am coping quite well and I thank God for that. Yes, and we too thank God for that. So, Minister, I saw on one of those news reports that there's a plan to do, you know, 4,000 leaks uh, repairs, 4,000 repairs to leaks by the end of January 2022. How is the ministry uh, going to be able to undertake that? Well, you see, um, when we started the community water improvement um, project um, early, well, in, by, by the middle of of 2021, last year, Natalie, we, it was a joint effort between Ministry of Public Utilities, WASA being the executing agency, and the management arrangement that we put in place ensured the successful completion of these projects, all right? Um, over the years, WASA um, struggled with successful execution and project management, et cetera. There are always cost delays, um, cost overruns, delays in projects, et cetera. So we decided to put a special management arrangement in place where we set up team leads in the various parts of the country 
um, give them specific tasks, responsibilities, etc. And every Monday morning, they would um, participate in a very early um, virtual meeting to report on the progress of the various um, projects that they are supervising. And that resulted in the, the, the CBA for the Community Water Improvement Program being um, that um, successful thus far. That um, model we, we started using in a leak repair program that we also put together, utilizing a very, a, a very similar model where every week they would have to come and report. We set up team leads, et cetera, um, a special management arrangement, and we track the progress of the work every single week. And I can tell you, that when this started at the end of, um, which is the leak repair program, when it started at somewhere in the middle of November or at the start of November, by the end of November going into the middle of December, there was a backlog of 4,000 leaks. And by middle of December, we were close to completing 2,000 leaks. When I entered the ministry, there was a backlog of over 4,000 leaks and within the space of one month to six weeks, we were able, putting together this management system in place, we were able to, um, to address 2,000 leaks. And therefore, moving into January, at the end of this month, we expect, um, with, the pro with, the, with the program ramping up, to complete the outstanding 2,000 leaks, which would result in uh, 4,000 leaks being completed in a, so, in a matter So, Minister, of let me see if I understand something, because I remember when you just came in, it, it appeared that there was an acrimonious relationship between you and WASA workers. What changed? No, there was not an acrimonious relationship between myself and WASA. Um, I, you know, I am a person, I am a minister. I, you know, I, I take my oath of office um, seriously. And I thought I, I needed to, to leverage and to level with the people of Trinidad and Tobago as to the state of WASA. And I took aim at the management of WASA for the state of the organization. When I came into the organization, I recognized that you have a number of employees who were prepared to do the work and were willing to do the work. But their problem, their, their problem was a management issue. The issue that I've discovered inside of the organization was that of management. When you look at all the investments that were done within WASA that did not result in an improvement in the water supply to the people of Trinidad and Tobago. When you look at expensive desal water that we entered into how many years ago, costing this country $700 million a year, that is not the workers of WASA causing that. That is a management problem. It's a corruption problem. And oftentimes, the poor employees face the brunt of a corrupt management. And I, I, I came forward and I told the country, that WASA's problem was management, and it was costing the people of this country billions of dollars. And if we were uh, to fix the water and, and authority, minister, to fix the uh, problem, we have to address the problem of management. And I do remember that there was a, 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 a report that was done, some investigations done or looking into, you know, the structure of WASA, and that it was discovered that there were over 400 plus managers, and that there were plans Correct. to trim that down. Has that happened as yet? It has not happened as yet. Um, the we are almost on the cusp of completing the transformation plan. And um, I expect that by the end of this month, early next next month for the latest, the government of Trinidad and Tobago will announce to the people of Trinidad and Tobago its plans for the transformation of WASA, where all these management issues um, we intend to tackle head on. Right. All right. So well, definitely looking forward to that. If you notice, I'm keeping my eye on the ball with that one. But I know, I in, realize that. Oh, definitely. But I, can't, I, I, can't, I can't afford to forget that. But Minister, in terms of the Community Water Improvement Program, you were saying to us that, you know, so far 17 to 18 projects done in, 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 in such a short space of time. But I know one of the things we've heard over the months is that finances are tight. How was the ministry able to undertake this and at what cost? So um, we got a, we got a, um, a release an allocation from Ministry of Finance last year midterm um, in the sum of $20 million. And these projects, the 21 projects that we have identified, um, the, the initial estimate was about $20, $21 million. Almost every single project that we've executed, we had cost, we, we had savings. So for example, we had savings from the petrol booster um, somewhere in the region of a million dollars, and we use the savings to 
do the improvement work at the Lower Mendes Drive booster. Then we had further savings from the Lower Mendes Drive booster. And then guess what we did? We took the savings from um, the Lower Mendes Drive um, booster project and we went to Lalaha, a very rural community in Minister Becker's um, constituency of the Blanchishers Road. And that is a community that does not have water and does not have electricity. So I went there with Minister Beckel sometime last year, and I promised the, the people who live there that we are going to undertake a program or a project to introduce water to them as well as electricity. The savings that we have, we've had from Lower Mendes Drive Booster, we applied it to a new project in Lalaha, which was not initially on the project. And um, I can tell you that the pipes um, were run. We, we constructed an, an intake from a beautiful river source in the Lalaha community. And as soon as I'm out of quarantine, I will be commissioning um, uh, that water project in the Lalaha community where Lalaha will now have water for the very first time, perhaps in 60 years. We also, um, uh, we also undertook a program in Brasso Seco where we, we laid down some pipelines, again, using savings from other projects because those Brasso Seco, Lalaha, they were not part of the initial program that we approved, list of projects that we approved. And we got savings from other projects and we included further projects, which so we extended it to Brasso Seco, Lalaha, as well as a new booster station in Brazil off the, um, the, to the, the Tampuna Road, because the people in Brazil and San Rafael, they started experiencing some serious problems for water. And mm -hmm. that new booster station was completed utilizing the savings from other projects. So Minister, you spoke about 22 communities identified in the first instance. Are there plans to extend this? Because I'm sure that you have more than 22 communities in Trinidad and Tobago uh, without that constant supply of pipeborne water. Certainly. So we have identified, we've got um, $11 million in, the, in, in this current financial year. And with the $11 million, we have identified 15 communities to um, where we, we've identified for that intervention to improve the water supply. So some of those 15 communities will be rolling out. We'll, we'll list those communities um, in a week time, as soon as I'm out of isolation. We've already put the projects together. We've already assembled the various team leads and those projects will start probably by the end of this week or very early next week. Um, we, we have estimated that given the, um, the, the kind of work that is required to be executed in those various 15 communities, we anticipate that by the end of, um, by the, by the end of March, those um, projects will be completed and those 15 communities that have been identified they will start seeing also an improvement in their, in their water supply under this beautiful project. So this is a continuous thing that, you know, you just want to keep identifying communities and keep ruling out the community water improvement program. That's correct. So that is, that is a separate program from the overall water improvement strategy we have for Trinidad and Tobago. This community water improvement program is only geared towards um, um, communities that are you know, getting water probably once every nine days or, or once um, every, every, you know, once a month or twice a month, as, as the case may be. But um, what we intend to do is we continue to identify those communities and um, to improve their water supply to at least three or four days a week. But, um, but we have a, a, a national strategy that we are going to roll out where every single or every part of the, the country will see an improvement in their water supply. And that strategy is to identify about 40 to 50 million gallons of water in the country so that um, all over the country, people will start seeing an improvement in their water supply and improvement in their water scheduling. And, and, and this is not a case of a short-term fix and after six months, people will go back to not having, waters, right? having water, right? Certainly, because what we are doing, Natalie, is that what, one of the things I have noted when I came into the ministry was that there was a fixation in the past by WASA to do what, what their water projects was mainly laying on pipelines. And that's the reason why you have all these pipelines in Central and South Trinidad not being utilized over 80 or $90 million in pipes being laid out in bush all over Central Trinidad, um, hiding from, from, from everyone else. I have discovered that. And um, 
all these pipelines that were laid down, they did not result in an improvement in water supply. Because if, you, if you're not investing in producing more water, then what on earth are you investing in putting on pipelines and what are you going to pour into it? Not air or gas. It, it, it is water. And over the years, we have expanded our, you know, you know, housing stock, constructing communities all over Trinidad and Tobago. And we have not been, we have not been producing water to send into those communities. And that's the reason why we have so many communities across Trinidad and Tobago on a water schedule, getting water three days a week, four days a week. And sometimes it can drop to two days a week if more housing communities are constructed in that area and the, the limited water resource has to be now um, re-diverted or diverted to, to, to address the, the water needs of those communities. So therefore my focus in 2022 and 2023 is to identify those rich aquifers in Trinidad and Tobago, in Central, in Northeast, in Southwest, Southeast Trinidad and Tobago to bring more water into the grid so that people can start getting inching closer to a 24 seven water supply. Minister, I want to thank you so much for the work that you know your ministry is doing, especially with this community water improvement program. And I really hope that it is something that continues to be rolled out because God forbid, it is just ridiculous that in 2021, there are people without pipe-borne water. So all the best to your ministry and thank you for the work that you're doing. Thank you very much, Natalie. And also, I also want to thank the team and the employees of WASA because they are working overtime, Natalie. They are not claiming overtime. They are so motivated. They are so you know glad to be part of this initiative to change lives and to impact lives positively. These workers work late at night. They are bonding with the community. They are not claiming overtime. And I am very much excited to continue this agenda into 2022. So thank you very much for that. I never knew the day would come when I'd hear that WASA workers aren't claiming overtime. <laughs> Indeed, this is a blessing for 2022. Minister, <laughs> well done. <laughs> thank you very much. All You're the best. most welcome. Uh, the Minister of Public Utilities uh, there, the Honorable Marvin Gonzalez, talking to us about the Community Water Improvement Program that's taking water. They've identified in the first phase 22 communities and have already delivered to 17 to 18 of those communities to get them pipe-borne water more than once a week. And I'm just so excited about this.